Hi everyone, this is Fedwa from Healthy Me. Thank you for watching my video. Today I'm going to talk to you about GERD, how I live with GERD every day, and what I do to alleviate the symptoms. Please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you inside. So what is GERD? GERD is basically a digestive disorder that affects your esophageal spinster, which means that it allows your food and the acid from your stomach to come back up again. I have been suffering with GERD for almost three years, and believe me, it's not very easy to live with. How it started? I went out for dinner one day with my husband, and when we were driving back, I started to feel like I couldn't breathe. It felt like there was a lump in my throat, and I literally started getting a panic attack inside the car. And without even telling my husband what was going on, I just turned around and drove straight to the ER room. When I got to the ER, I explained the symptoms and basically they didn't take it very serious. I guess they kind of knew already what was happening to me and they already knew that it was probably just a panic attack. What I thought was happening to me was an allergic reaction from something that was probably in the food. But I'm very used to eating pasta and red sauces and nothing really happens. Okay, sometimes I suffer from acidity, but that usually goes away. So this is how it all started. When I was driving back home, I started to feel lightheaded. I couldn't breathe. It felt like there was a lump stuck in my throat. And every time I swallowed, that lump would like move. And that was, was just something strange, which I've never felt before. And I started to panic. Now, I've never had a panic attack before. And if you've never had a panic attack before, you probably think you are having a heart attack. And when you do have a panic attack, you basically start to breathe heavier because it feels like your, your breathing is obstructed. Your nasal passage is basically blocked. Um, palpitation, oh my God, palpitation. Your heart is just beating like crazy. I guess it's a reaction of the body trying to protect you. Your arm starts to get numb and you become extremely lightheaded. So these are some of the things that I started to feel after I was eating late at night. Now, I'm someone who likes to binge on popcorn. I love Coca-Cola. I used to love smoking, like, a lot. Pistachios. I was staying up every night eating a whole bag of pistachios, sitting on my bed, watching movies every night for almost six months. And it turns out pistachios was one of the foods that really, really triggered my GERD. And every time I had pistachios, I would tell my husband in the middle of the night, no, 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 we got to go to ER again because the whole panicky thing starts. And I'm telling him it's an allergic reaction. It's an allergic reaction. And it wasn't because it was an allergic reaction. It was because I was literally eating too much of it and my stomach couldn't handle it. It was just too heavy. It was not digesting. So after a while, literally, I couldn't eat anything. I would go out and I couldn't swallow my food. So the only thing that would actually go down my throat was lettuce. I was living on lettuce for almost a week and that was a horrible experience. And then I went and I seeked out my doctor and I basically had an endoscopy done to check if I had any hernias or if there was any, uh, to check if there were any ulcers also, but thank, thank God and luckily there was nothing wrong with me. It was just literally my GERD. Now he told me that this condition will never go away and I would have to change my lifestyle, eat better, exercise, and lose some weight if I was really trying to get rid of GERD. Another thing that GERD was doing to me that I did not know was it made me feel like I was getting a cold every month. And I was visiting the ENT doctor every month thinking, oh my God, what is this virus that wouldn't leave me alone? And it turns out, eventually I found out, was that GERD was actually causing the inflammation around my tonsils and the inflammation inside my nose. So these nasal inflammations and throat um, inflammations were actually happening as soon as I started to eat. But luckily, as I worked with my doctor, things started to get better. The inflammation was going away. Uh, my stomach was, was feeling much better. And of course, I'm not gonna name these medications because it's better if you are suffering from the same symptoms to actually go see a doctor. And I would suggest you see a doctor as soon as you start feeling any type of acidity that is happening in your body, the heartburn, the throat burn, the esophageal burn. Don't wait. Don't wait until it gets worse. Make sure you go and see a doctor. 
One other thing I want to talk to you about, and that is sticky saliva or thick saliva. So when you start chewing your food, you start to notice as if your food is getting stuck to the inside of your throat and your tonsils and your pipes, and you're literally trying to swallow to push that food down. And it doesn't, okay, it helps a little bit if you drink water, but you still feel it's really, really sticky. And when you feel that, there are some things that you can do to alleviate that. And as I did my research, because doctors don't really tell you everything that's going to help you, you need to do the research on how to help yourself. And especially when doctors only love to give you medication and medication doesn't really help you unless you decide to make lifestyle changes. So one of the things that you can do in order to get rid of that sticky saliva, I call it sticky saliva, is to keep yourself always hydrated by drinking some water. And I'm not telling you to drink like a full glass of water. No, literally you need to sip small amounts of water throughout the day in order to, in order to loosen up that thickness of that saliva. Another thing that you can do when you start to eat and you feel that stickiness in your mouth and that difficulty swallowing is chew slowly, take smaller bites and rest between each bite that you take. Now I notice sometimes I panic when I eat, especially when my sticky saliva gets really bad. So what do I do? I just put my fork down and I just wait. Just give yourself like a minute or two minutes to literally get rid of that anxiety. Because I notice that I panic and I get some anxiety when I'm eating and that happens because I'm thinking, am I going to choke if I swallow my food? And then my nose gets really stuffy. So I'm thinking like, oh my God, you know, you need to breathe and, and the air that goes in through your mouth, it helps you chew your food and actually push the food down while you're swallowing. So if you are getting that tiny panic attack while you're eating, just slow down, put it down, and just relax. If you are sitting with your kids and they're driving you nuts while you're eating, leave the table. Get up and leave the table. Go to the bathroom. Go do something else. And once everything is back to normal and you're feeling better, sit down and continue eating. Don't ever eat your food when you're angry or someone's driving you crazy. Just relax. You need to always be aware of how you're eating. And, and how you're chewing so you can alleviate that panic attack. So what are the things that you should avoid eating? Any food that's very acidic, like oranges and pineapples, stay away from those. Now, sometimes you might get that orange that's like really nice and sweet. You can probably get away with having one. Avoid eating spicy food, literally. If you eat something spicy, you're going to pay the price for it. Smokers, bad news for you. Stop smoking immediately. I literally stopped smoking overnight after I ended up at ER. Stop smoking. It does not help you at all. Chocolate, garlic, onion. Now, I'm not telling you to stop eating everything that you like or adding the spices that you like when you cook. But I am telling you to experiment small quantities. If you've eaten something today that literally made you feel a little bit acidic or giving you that burning sensation in your throat, just next time use less of it or try to find out what exactly triggered it. I don't eat green belly peppers. I stay away from those. They literally kill me. Tomatoes, tomato sauces, if you love spaghetti with tomato sauce, mm -mm, stop. Stop eating it. It's going to be better for you. Caffeine. Now, I love my lattes. So I literally have one latte a day. I am not giving up my caffeine. So what I do is, instead of having a whole shot of espresso into my latte, I tell them to basically give me half of a shot. And I use full cream milk. I feel like the full cream milk kind of makes my tummy feel better after drinking such heavy coffee or such strong coffee. Peppermint? Spearmint. Oh no, don't do that. Chewing anything like bubble gum that has those flavors into it or the tea, it makes me feel terrible. Like I said again, if you feel that doesn't affect you, go ahead and keep doing it. But for me, it's a no. Stress. Now stress is the main cause. 
or ulcers in the stomach or your digestive system not working very well. So when you're stressed at work, go for a walk. Take a 15 minute break and go for a walk. Go do some jumping jacks in the bathroom. That will help you relieve the stress. But don't sit there. Do not sit there and just keep stressing away. It's really important for you to get some exercise, to move around. That will help your, your digestive system basically work much better. Try exercising. If you don't like exercising, 30 minutes a day walk. You never know what might happen in two, three months. Maybe you'll end up joining a yoga class or you might join an aerobics class, but give it a try. Always try to stay more active. Do not eat after 6 p.m. Now, I don't follow that rule very well, but I try as much as I can. There are some medications that will make your uh, GERD worse. Some of those things could be painkillers. Now, I'm someone who suffers a lot from migraines, so I do drink, take a lot of Advil's a month, honestly. Um, what does help me and what has helped me get less of these migraines is basically some hot water with some slices of lemon into my water in the morning and I sip through that on an empty stomach before I shower or after I shower and I just wait for like half an hour or an hour before you actually eat some breakfast. It will really help you. It also helps your digestive system. It really helps you with your GERD and all the acidity. So try that and I'm sure it's going to help you too. Another thing about medication, don't ever take your medication on an empty stomach. Make sure you always eat before you take medication so you don't ruin the lining of your stomach. What you should eat less of, rice and bread. Now I've noticed that the wheat and the rice does not digest very well in my stomach, but I still have some because I feel like it kind of creates this support for all the acid that's inside my stomach. It kind of absorbs that acid, so it kind of alleviates it. So I try not to just have salads and, and meat. I try to put a little bit, of a small piece of bread or just a little bit of rice on the side to help me. Now what you can consume. Like I said, find out what doesn't affect you and does not let you suffer and have more of that. So what I do, so what I do is, like I said, some lemon slices in the morning with some hot water. I like to also add like a small little piece of ginger in there and just let it sit for like 10 minutes. And then I just sip it away for like the next 15 minutes. It tastes really good, believe me. What you can also do is start with a small teaspoon of apple cider vinegar in a small 500 ml of water and just sip that throughout the morning. If you feel that you can go up to one tablespoon of apple cider inside your water, then go ahead and do it. Do not overdo it. And if you feel the burning sensation, immediately drink some more water to get rid of all that acidic feeling, but it does help you. So start with a little bit of apple cider vinegar and then go uh, increase gradually to a tablespoon or to as much as you can handle, but not more than a tablespoon. Start enjoying more soups. Soups are very good. Don't put too many vegetables because that makes it kind of acidic too. Uh, you can add some carrots. I love zucchini in my soup. You can put some uh, chicken broth and beef broth and mix it up together. That gives it a nice thick feeling and a nice flavor. Another good thing that I like to eat in the morning is egg whites. I try to, vo to avoid the yolk because I feel it's very heavy on my stomach, especially if you're having like two, three eggs together, it becomes really heavy. And the taste also, I don't really like too much yolk on, in my eggs. So what I do is I take the egg whites, I beat it, put some salt on it, and then you can use some coconut oil on the pan or a little bit of olive oil. And then you basically don't really scramble it, but do it like an omelet and it tastes really delicious. And I re it's very light on the stomach and you feel that it digests very well. Also cucumbers, cucumbers are amazing. So have some more cucumbers. It's very al alkaline and it's very watery. So it doesn't really make your digestive system work very hard. And it's really good if you're constipated. It really loosens the bowel. Avocados are delicious. And I'm sure you've heard this many times that it's one of the best oils that you can have. Mesh some avocados, put some lemon on it, olive oil, a little bit of salt, and just enjoy it. It's 
perfect. So apples, I like to have apples around 10 or 11 in the morning. They support my digestive system. They help with the acidity in my stomach and it's a really healthy snack and sweet. Instead of having some chocolate, have some apples. Now, if you are going to be bad, I suggest you eat the foods that you like in the daytime to give your stomach some time to digest. But if you are going to be good, you're not going to regret it. And I'm sure you're going to feel way, way better. Now, the GERD symptoms do go away with time, but you need to take care of yourself and make that lifestyle change and understand what makes you suffer and what is good for you. And, and just study the variety of foods that are available out there that makes you feel good. Don't mix too many foods together. Don't mix too many uh, types of fruits together. Don't mix too many veggies. You know that when you mix things, it just becomes like this very icky salad inside of your stomach. So have an apple, have a cucumber, um, have something that you like, but don't mix things. And always give yourself like at least two, three hours to digest whatever it is that you ate. So to recap, what will help you? Eat well, exercise, lose weight, sit up right when you eat, don't slouch, don't work while you're eating, don't watch TV while you're eating. That's one of the rules that I never follow. If you do have difficulty uh, breathing or swallowing or that sticky saliva starts to mix up with your food and you can't swallow, there's an, a really nice technique that I've learned online. So basically when you swallow, as you can see, I still have some difficulty swallowing. You could turn your face to the side as you're chewing your food and try to swallow it. And then, or to the other side. Sometimes you just really need to adjust your body so that your esophagus kind of changes where it is or your head. But it's really a technique that's really, really helped me, especially with this sticky saliva that is very, very annoying. If you think you have a swallowing disorder, go see your doctor. Your doctor can help you. There are special uh, speech therapies and exercises that you can do that will strengthen the, the muscles, the, the swallowing muscles inside your throat. So if you feel like it's really a problem for you to, to swallow, go see a doctor. I am not talking about the irritation in your nose from the food that you eat. I'm talking about literally having difficulty swallowing. So make sure you go see your doctor. There's also a lot of very good videos online if you want to research the symptoms that you have and what are the, the, the techniques available or the exercises, I suggest you do that. They have helped me and I'm very grateful to all the people who have posted those videos online. So when do you seek out a doctor? As soon as you start experiencing acidity or the burning sensation or the heartburns, always, always try to go and see your doctor as soon as the symptoms are early because later it would be worse. You don't want things to get worse and then you go seek help of a professional doctor. If you have, if you have difficulty breathing and swallowing, definitely go see your doctor. Sore throat, if the, your, if the sound of your voice has changed, if you cough, if you are wheezing without literally having any sort of lung problems or anything like that, go seek your doctor that lump in your throat, go see, go see a doctor. Do not wait for the symptoms to get worse. Remember, you are the only person that can heal yourself. Medicine will help you, but it will not help you forever. Whatever you digest, it will always have side effects. Whatever medication you take will always have side effects. Take your medications for whatever time the doctor has prescribed them for but you be your own healer by eating better, by exercising, by resting, by not stressing. I hope this video has helped you. If you did like this video, please click on like and do leave me a comment.